It is nice to block the doorway. It is nice to go to jail. There are nicer ways to do it, but the nice way always fails. It is nice. It is nice. You told us once. You told us twice. But if that's freedom's price. Yes, that's our right. whole lives. Your whole lives. So right. yeah, so, so that hasn't changed. changed at all. Yeah. What has changed is coming from the viewpoint of being old women. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Old women were being segregated in so many ways. You know, either we were a single block of issues, social security, social security Medicare, yeah. prescription drugs, which are incredibly important survival issues for old women, but that's not all of who we are. You know, we are also, you know, involved in all issues of social justice, personally involved. Which was part of the reason that we actually formed our group, was to do that kind of outreach, show up at the women prisoners protest and say, hey, you know, we're here to represent all the old women who are in prison. And everybody went, oh my God, I never thought about that. Not only that, but we show up with our giant puppet, so they can't miss us. <laughs> it's like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> they can't make us invisible anyway. Yeah, yeah. we <laughs> <we're> refuse <laughs> to be invisible. Absolutely. <laughs> we call her power. And that name stands for Pistol Woman Engaged in Revolution. That describes what we feel we're doing. Do you ever see the old women's project and their puppet that come to the rally? I see it and they look great, you know. They made a nice, beautiful work. I've been at a lot of rallies where I just see that big woman puppet kind of looming above the crowd. It's very inspiring to know that like 40 years from now, I could still be just as involved as I am today. Without the old women's project, Women would be forgotten, and they never let us forget. People tend to forget many old women are still working because of their lives of unpaid and low-paid work. I think that's one of the amazing things about the Old Women's Project, is that it acts like an old woman. It's funny, it's wise, it's got gravitas, but it's also got levity, and that's exactly what the movement needs. We would as old women, be at a protest, and would be a significant factor within this protest. And you would read about it in the paper the next day, and it would be the young people protesting. And we were invisible. And there were lots of old people, women as well as men, who were participating fully in all of this, and were never acknowledged, that remained completely invisible to the other protesters as well as to the media. And it seemed really important to somehow target the fact that we were old and that was important. One of our goals is, is clearly, obviously, consciousness raising around ages. And also to get rid of these categorizations of I am this kind of person and because I am a good person I will join in coalition with you and your interests and you will do the same for me when I need help and instead saying we're all we're all involved in each other's issues. For example, there was a huge home health care demonstration in San Diego. We brought our puppet power to that demonstration in solidarity, and we also spoke there. Whether as home health care providers or home health care recipients, all women's lives depend on stopping these budget cuts. Old women are both recipients of home health care, which is everybody's perception of us, mm -hmm. but we are also providers of home health care. So these connections are, are, are there just all the time. Yeah. But nobody yeah. sees us as being part of their issue. Child care is an old woman's issue. There are old women in their 60s, 70s, and older who are the primary caregivers for their children's children. 
old women are performing unpaid work in the home. Oh my mm-hmm. heavens, yeah. Just all over the place. Oh yes, not only are old women taking care of the great-grandchildren, but they're taking care of other old women, they're taking care of old men. Homelessness is a major issue for old women. There are old women who ride the bus every night to have a safe place to sleep. And the ranks of the old women who are homeless are growing every day. Old men, you know, if they have social security, or if they only have social security, they generally have more than than women, and they often have pensions and so forth. But a lot of old women, you know, spend all their lives working inside the home for no pay and have no social security of their own. And so when they get the minimum social security, it won't even pay for a single room in San Diego. Being old does not protect you from being raped. Women in their 70s, old, 80s. Old women are battered by spouses, partners, children. We are connecting our issues with everybody else's issues. Last night, hundreds of women marched around the federal building in downtown San Diego. And their message, support for Iraqi and American women and against the war. The protest was organized by the Old Women's Project. The women argue the cost of a war in Iraq would severely slash funding to programs women depend on, like health care, low-income housing, and education. At one point during the rally, enough women had gathered to form a human chain around the federal building. A sign to those here that a great number of Americans want to stop war before it starts. This is a pivotal point, I believe, in our United States history, where people are saying before a war started, we are the people. You need to listen to us. By the very essence of our group, we're able to reach out to other old women to come and join us. Come down to the federal building and raise hell about the war. And they come. And we're also making it desirable to be old. Yeah. Because, for example, when we invite people to our actions, we say old women are especially welcome, are especially uh, encouraged, uh, encouraged to come, mm-hmm. to come but, uh, but women of all ages are welcome. Right. <laughs> yeah. So we create a little bit of a, of a hierarchy there. Mm-hmm. A little plus to being yeah. old. I know we had people say to us that we were really to call really rude. ourselves to call ourselves yeah. old, or to call and you know say that about women. Oh, that's just that's just terrible. That's rude. Mm-hmm. I mean, even people who are our supporters, they can't say that word without the er in the end. It's always the older women's project. No, it's the old women's project. Oh, oh, okay. And they just want to put older in there all the time, like they're insulting us to say. I mean, it's like it's a dirty word. It really is. It's also like when all women were called ladies. Now only old women are called ladies. <laughs> and, and women in sports. <laughs> but basically, it's the respect you get when you don't really have respect, when you don't have real equality, when you don't have real respect. It's a little like going into a store with one of my daughters, and this happens often. And the, there will be a young male clerk there who will say, well, you two must be sisters. You know, I find that to be so offensive, and I usually end up getting not very nice about it. I suppose it would be all right to just ignore him, but it's really hard to do. It's very offensive. It makes me feel angry. I got that, I got that uh, yesterday in the grocery store from a manager of the grocery store who recognized me and said, hello, young lady. Oh, young my God. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Uh-huh. Yep. Or, oh, you can't be that old. Mm-hmm. Or, don't tell me you're a grandmother, which is like, what do you mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you're be a great-grandmother. Yeah, <laughs> or 60 years young. 60 years young, uh-huh. yeah. We become defined by the young person instead of being able to claim the age that we are. It's not that I'm older than this young person, it's that I'm an old woman. I'm glad to be an old woman. The problem is, I think all of these words, you have to say like words. senior, like older, are words that are used to evade the, the concept of old. 
elder is another one. Assuming just because you're old, you're somehow wiser. And I mean, I know some old people aren't so wise at all. And never were. Never, never were. Never will never be. Never will be. Yep. And some young people are pretty damn wise. <laughs> Then they also want to know if we can do fun banking. When we organize something, we organize it ourselves. We always ask women to come without signs because we work very hard on getting our message well honed, saying exactly what we wanted to say. This is the first line. So it would take two women to carry this beautiful phone board. Phone Let her you uh -huh. gorgeous. You are so gorgeous. Uh -huh. The second line would read, um, Bush brides say, gay or straight, we don't want Bush to choose our mate. One of the principles for our actions is that it has to be something that if we're the only ones there, right. it will still work. Yes. Yeah, that's a good and we've gone hoping that there will be two other women who will join us and then we've ended Very up good, having yes. nearly 400 show up. You are out. Okay, oh, can you fix yeah, the veil a little bit back there? Fix it. Well, we just want it to come down instead of being in a. You want the ribbon? They want the bow. The it's not going to. Just so it just hangs straight down. Oh, okay, it's not going to. That is that way. I see. That's good. No, I just. There, that's good. That's perfect. <sighs> so. I don't. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I, I have a new design for wedding gowns. Yeah? Pockets. Oh, yeah. isn't that the truth? Isn't that the truth? Yeah. Welcome to the revolt of the Bush Prize. Yeah. Yeah. President Bush's Healthy Marriage Initiative has protesters hitting the streets. As Jennifer Brandt explains, the term Here Comes the Bride took on a whole new meaning through the streets of downtown today. All dressed in white, bouquets in hand. These so-called Bush brides are mocking the president's healthy marriage initiative. It's going to take money away from welfare programs and funnel it directly into faith-based organizations, mostly fundamentalist organizations, and to promote marriage. Marriage is not any kind of a cure for women's poverty. The White House plans to spend $1.5 billion over five years to help the poorest of Americans have healthy marriages. But these ladies say the idea of keeping low-income couples married to lift them out of poverty is... Dumb, dumb, it's dumb, 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 it's dumb. We're troublemakers. We're troublemakers, yeah. I'd say we're definitely more in the spirit of the Maggie Coon and the Grey Panthers. The Grey Panthers was, was terrific, but it wasn't a women's organization. Right. And we right. feel very, very strongly that ageism itself, that attitude is really a women's issue. There are the two images of old women. We are either the kindly, loving grandmother, grandmother. who thinks only about others and no, doesn't think about herself, all giving, all loving, or else we're cranky and cantankerous and feisty and difficult. Old men get made, uh, you know, heads of corporations and presidents. It's like their power builds as they get older. And women lose the things that, that society values in women. They lose their looks. They don't call young, beautiful women that marry wealthy men as trophy wives for nothing. I mean, that's exactly what it is. We are really, really constantly getting the message that we are who nobody would ever choose to look at. It's like, you know, they're talking about me because, you know, we all tend to feel the same through the decades, right? And you look in the mirror and, yeah, your face is changing and your body's changing, but so what? I mean, it's still you. And I think at first it, it is, it's shocking and it's really hard to deal with all of these things. But I also think it helps to be defiant about it instead of trying to do everything you can to make yourself still look 20. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a losing battle. It's never going to happen. You're going to end up looking like that poor cat woman who's had all of those plastic surgeries and now looks like a cat. Um, 
And you need to, at some point, claim yourself for who you are. And of course, women are experiencing it at earlier and earlier ages. 35 year olds. 35 year olds yeah. are, are really, really worrying about this. I mean, particularly now with plastic surgery and with Botox yeah. and anti aging this and anti aging workshops, unless you are coming from a very centered place that is extremely demoralizing, humiliating. One thing that's really, really helps being a part of this group is that uh, I couldn't wait to be 60. No, I, yeah, yeah oh, she's the youngest one. I'm the yes. youngest one. I, was yeah. a, I had to be a wannabe. Oh, good, I can live older. Oh, do I look old enough? Oh, girl. Right, right, a little yeah. prestige. Yeah. We had to sort of hide Manny. Yeah. <laughs> we had to include in our literature and those approaching old. <laughs> that meant Manny. <laughs> <laughs> but now she's there, so we took that phrase out. Right. <laughs> Cynthia and I actually met in downtown San Diego, standing on a street corner. Mm -hmm. And we were holding opposite ends of a very large banner and had never met each other and started talking. And that was the beginning. And That's that was right. 1987. As it was building up to the Gulf War, we were part of, along with Manny, a group called the Women's Alliance Against the War. And I remember walking in and seeing Cynthia and Barbara, who had never met, and recognizing them because I had just that week read an article they'd written that was in Ms. Magazine and had their picture. I was like, wow! I was really impressed. And I met Janice for the first time then. I think there were 15 or 16 of us then. After the Gulf War, we formed our own smaller group. Being in a group with Barbara McDonald, <laughs> you know, it was like being in a major ongoing consciousness raising Yeah, group. we had to come in pretty ageist yeah. ourselves. From the beginning, the message is not to become the old woman, and the best way to hang on to your, to your youth is to keep a distance between yourself and the old woman. You don't um, go out with old women to a movie, to whatever. You go out with women your own age. It is almost as though if you went out with uh, two or three old women as a young woman, there would be a kind of stigma, as though it were almost catching. She would illuminate the ageism in every situation. And I think the question comes up, where does ageism come from? At the marketplace, it's very convenient. Old women don't buy many clothes. Why should they? Who's looking? Young women want so much not to grow old, so there's a real market for young women in clothes, in sports equipment, diet products, makeup, facial surgery, so that economically we can see that it is profitable to have ages. We have all of us been younger and been really, really ageist. <laughs> without yeah. knowing it. Oh yeah, I think it's a completely distanced thing. It's not something that you're even concerned yeah. about until you there. wake up one morning and it's holy shit. I got old. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that true? I'm that not, I'm almost an overnight I'm not, thing. I'm not yeah. us anymore. I'm yeah. them. Well, I was only 46 when I got with this group, so you know, it was more abstract to me. It's become more real as I get as I get older. Intellectually, I understood it, mm -hmm. but it wasn't happening to right, me right, yet. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, right. no, nobody made the, told me I was cute or, you know, made these disparaging, offensive comments to me then. I was in my early 40s when I first met Barbara. Yes. So you don't have any idea until you mm -hmm. get there yourself. Mm -hmm. And then it starts to happen and it's like, whoa, this is what she was talking right. about. It's like people saying these incredibly inappropriate things to you that make you realize that you are being seen as really other, that you are not irrelevant. A, you're, you're, well, irrelevant, but also not even, you know, you're not, you don't inhabit the same world. For example, I had worked on a living wage campaign with a young man who was very smart, very progressive, very political. And after a year, 
we meet in a restaurant, oh and he, uh, we have a nice conversation, and then as he's leaving, he says, I'm so glad you're still up and around. <laughs> <laughs> and the shock of that, when you think you have had a as conversation equals. with a political equal, and suddenly you see that you're just this whole, you, you're just in the whole other realm yes, of thought. Yes. But something like, different from the, than what you would say about someone who's 35, yeah. then you're probably making an ageist comment. For example, if an old woman is being sexual, and you say, oh, isn't that cute? That's really cute. That's really ageist. Yeah. Or look at her. Why doesn't she dress like, her age? Oh, whoa. Look at, you know, look at that old woman in a miniskirt. I mean, gosh, doesn't she have a clue? I mean, you know. It's you know, I think what happened was we let Barbara carry the mantle of worrying about the ages. And, uh, I mean, basically, yeah. while she was still here. Right. And once Barbara wasn't with us anymore, to be always the voice speaking mm -hmm. out on ageism, mm -hmm. It was like, okay, somebody's got to take this right. up. Who but us? Right. Exactly. Carry yeah. it on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Carry it like, on. I mean, it, it felt like maybe she just sat on our shoulder and yelled in her ears, okay, it's time to do this. <laughs> yeah. You know? And there's something wonderful about having these women of all ages, right. young girls all the way up to very old women. It's going to take more than three old women to turn the world around, but if we can get more old women and women who are about to turn old, to see it not as a negative thing, but as a an exciting time, something that actually can be taken and used as a power instead of as a weakness. We can turn everything around, or they can. We feel that if people can begin to see old women as who we are and not as something disgusting, hideous, and so on, we actually, in fact, make it easier for the woman who's 50, the woman who's 40, the woman who's 35. In other words, we are that end of the spectrum, and we are the person they are becoming, and they can't stand to become us. So we claim our looks, we claim our white hair, we claim our wrinkles. It is nice to block the doorway. It is nice to go to jail. Ways to do it, but the nice ways always fail. It isn't nice, it isn't nice. You told us once, you told us twice. But if that is freedom's price, we don't mind. It is nice to carry banners or to sit in on the floor or to shout our cry of freedom at the hotel. told us once, you told us twice, but if that is freedom's price, we don't mind. We have tried negotiation and the three-man picket line. Mr. Charlie didn't see us and he might as well be blind. Now our new ways are years of lynching and the shot in Ever's back. Did you say it wasn't proper? Did you stand out on the track? You were quiet just like mice. Now you say we are nice. Well, if that is freedom's price, we don't mind. We have tried negotiation and the three-man picket line. Mr. Charlie didn't see us, and he might as well be blind. Now our new ways aren't nice when we deal with men of ice. But if that is freedom's price, we don't mind. How about those years of lynching and the shot in Ever's back? Did you say it wasn't proper? Did you stand out on the track? 
you were quiet just like mice Now you say we are nice Well, if that is freedom's price We don't 